Dan, first question is coming from Jason Quick with The Athletic. Dan, can you just kind of describe uh, what you guys did today and, and what it felt like to, to finally get started? Um, we just did a lot of activity, basically. It was real, it was real active from the jump. We had a real active warm up. Um, went over our plays, you know, just like in a simple form, like the, the stuff that people could pick up quick so we could uh, go over it in live action. And uh, then we went up and down. You know, we did some half court, five on five. Then we did full court, five on five, pretty much for the rest of the practice. Um, just covering like our, our new defensive coverages and um, going over some of our sets, you know, probably the stuff that we're going to run in the preseason, just keeping our, our offensive playbook small. Was there anything different uh, defensively, you know, that we would be able to kind of tell by looking at your guys' first action? Um, I think it would have been pretty obvious, you know, our um, just the way it looked, you know, how we're how we're covering things. Um, you know, I feel like it's more of a presence, you know, we're not giving up as much or allowing people to have as much space, you know, from the jump. And I feel like um, DJ and, and Rocco, both of them, you can tell that they're, uh, you know, high IQ defensive players, you know, they picked up on things pretty quick. Um, and it felt, you know, a little more difficult with them out there in practice, you know, usually you know, I'm able to have my way and kind of like navigate the things I want and make the plays that I want. And it was a little bit more difficult. Like I felt their length out there, um, but but more so than just the length and athleticism, I could tell that they, um, you know, they were processing things in their head that, you know, you just, it's not about whether we teach it to them or the coaches teach it to them or not. It's just defensive instincts that, that good offensive players notice and good defensive players. Next question is coming from Dwight James with NBC Sports Northwest. Uh, Dame, just from what you talked about, staying with the defense a minute, uh, is, is it obvious to you guys that the emphasis is changing more from offense to defense? And obviously, offensively, you guys have been together a long time, may not need to work on stuff as much, but is the emphasis in practice more on defense than it has been? Yeah, today it was. You know, it was pretty much all, all defensive and focused until, you know, maybe the last 20 minutes we just did, you know, up and down things we was focused more on executing our offense and knowing what we wanted to do on offense. But uh, pretty much up to that point, it was all defense. And, you know, I think that makes perfect sense. We, we haven't had trouble on our offense again. Uh, you know, we've been one of the better offensive teams in the league over the years. We never had trouble putting points on the board, um, you know, but defensively is where we've struggled and had, um, you know, the, the inconsistency um, more than anything else. So I think it makes sense that that would be our primary focus. Next question is coming from Aaron Fentress with the Oregonian. Hey, Damian, how disruptive were the past couple of days not being able to, to get started with camp as soon as you would like to and with people testing positive? I mean, it was disruptive. You know, it's, um, I think it helps that we dealt with the uncertainty. Like before the bubble, we didn't know when we was going to start. We didn't know what it was going to look like when we got here. Can we be on the court? Can we go in the locker room? Can we get in the showers? Can we, you know, we didn't really know anything. So um, I think this time, you know, it was like, all right, we wake up. I literally woke up and was walking to my car and, you know, thinking we was practicing. And then when I got here, it was like, all right, we not, you know, we're not practicing today. You know, that was that. But um, so it kind of tripped me out then when I was like, man, you know, it's, it could be like this for the whole season, where it's just, you know, all these bumps in the road, things getting shut down. Um, but I wouldn't say it disrupted me that much. I was just like, all right, you know, I worked out at home to make sure that, you know, my conditioning didn't fall off before we got on the court. And I know how, how tough it is sometimes that first day when you're doing so much up and down and, you know, you're not um, really used to bumping against bodies and defense to offense as much after the off season. Um, so I just, you know, those two days I worked out at home I came in the second day, worked out here, and you know, I, I feel good today. Thanks. Next question is coming from Casey Holdall, trailblazers.com. Damien, by that by that same token, were you were you at all concerned about your own health uh hearing that a, that another player had tested positive? Um and, and do you feel like at all that having a player test positive kind of just reminds you guys like, hey, we really need to kind of be on top of things this season because as you mentioned, you know, it, it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, it was definitely an eye opener uh, because I, I feel like I, 
I take all the, the proper steps to, to make sure that I'm being considerate of my family um, and I'm being considerate of, of my teammates and coaches and everybody that I got to work with every day. So I, um, I, I feel like everybody around here does that. And, you know, leading up to the bubble, you know, we didn't have that issue. You know, we didn't have positive tests coming out of our facility and things like that. So um, I guess I never really thought about it um, that deeply because it had never happened, you know, close uh, close to us like that. So once they, they told us, like, we had a few positive tests, I was like, man, like, I started thinking about who was in the weight room when I walked through the weight room yesterday and, you know, who hand did I shake? Who did I fist bump? You know, who, where, I started to just run back the whole, you know, prior two, three days, like trying to figure it out, like what's the possibility? Then I went home, you know, I was supposed to go pick up my son uh, from my mom's house and I didn't even want to go in the house. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm telling my, my fiance, like, well, I think, you know, you should just go get him and I'm staying upstairs. Like I was nervous a little bit, like I really don't know. So I think just the fact that something like that could happen and you could possibly not know, and you know, you can pass it along to your family and things like that was definitely a, a eye opener. Um, and it lets you know, like, it's going to be a, a tough season to get through, you know, counting on so many guys to, to be able to hold up their end of the bargain. Um, and it, it, it's kind of concerning, you know, honestly. Next question is coming from Sean Hyken with Bleacher Report. Uh, Dane, with today being your first practice and then you have a preseason game in three days, are you guys like ready to play a preseason game? Like, How much are you expecting to do? Are you going to try to play kind of your normal minutes load? Or are you going to guys all kind of try to ease back into it given kind of the short ramp up time? I mean, I'm... I mean, I don't call the shots, but I'm pretty sure we're going to ease into it. Like, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Terry is not going to throw us out there for 30 minutes. Um, you know, especially with our first few days of practice being uh, canceled and then us, you know, to start being so, um, I guess, abrupt, you know, it's, it's just right in front of us. Uh, I don't see us playing those, those regular minutes like that. I see us, you know, kind of easing into it playing a good stretch in the first quarter, a good stretch in the second quarter, and then just, you know, go from there. But um, Friday, I, I wouldn't expect to to be out there. You know, too much. Coming back to Jason Quick with The Athletic. What was the caliber of play like today? Huh? What was the caliber of play like today? It was, it was much higher than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Um, you know, at the start of it, it was like, you know, Couple guys lost the ball, you know, just dribbling, attacking the rim and the ball just fly out of bounds. We had like three of those in a matter of, you know, minutes. And then it started to get competitive. You know, we started to make shots. And uh, the one thing that stood out to me was everybody was in pretty good condition. You know, usually guys come back. Um, and when we start moving around, guys don't move that well to begin with, um, get tired, need a sub. And, you know, we didn't. We, once we started going, we started going and guys made shots. Guys were, you know, playing above the rim, attacking the rim, finishing, making shots, like moving at a fast pace. So, I mean, I was, I was actually impressed where it was like, you know, I, I feel good about how we moving for the fact that this is our first practice and we're delayed. You know, I thought it was pretty good. Hey, there was, uh, I want to ask you something kind of seriously, you know, the, the team put out that, uh, social media post of you shooting from half court and the ease in which you were doing it. How feasible is that, that you will do that in a game? Very. <laughs> it's very yeah. possible. Yeah. From half court. Yeah. And what, what kind of dialogue have you had with, with Terry Stotts about that? I told him I'm going to do it. And he said, I mean, he, Terry, I mean, he sees, he sees me in here every day, you know, and I work on my game, you know, I, I address the things that I feel like I could do better. Um, but the things that I do well, I just keep getting better at it. You know, I spend time doing it and I try to, you know, expand on that and add things. And obviously I'm not just going to be out here every game firing a shot from half court or maybe not even every 20 games. It might be once or twice in the whole season that I just feel like, you know, F it. But, um, you know, I, I do it just to, you know, for the challenge and for the fun kind of as well, you know. Um, like the game in the bubble against Brooklyn, it was like we was down seven, I think under seven minutes. I couldn't get a shot off. Like, 
they was double teaming me at half court. I literally couldn't get a shot off. And we went from being hot to being cold. And I was like, you know, it's, I'm not going to say that it was like the best shot, but that was a shot that I could get off. And it happened to be a shot that I, that I spent time shooting. So, I mean, I made it and I was comfortable shooting it. So, I mean, it's more of like for something like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but if I get into a game and I hit four, three or four threes in a row, you, that's when you should have your eyes open because it might be going up at half court at that point. Next question is coming from AJ McCord with Coin. Okay, well, I had a different question, but we'll just talk about that one a little bit more. So it's going to be like a sort of like a vibe in the game, not so much a you're going to go into the game with the intention of shooting a half court. Yeah, I mean, if I'm 0 for 3 from 3, I'm not going to fire from half court. <laughs> But if I come out to start the game and I hit like the first three threes or whatever, I just very, I might just stop at half court and just raise up. And okay. it's, not, it's not gonna be crazy because I've, I've done it a few times. I was just literally like barely inside half court. Yeah, no, I, I remember it. It seems like that's something, I guess, how have you chosen to develop that part of your game over the last few years? Because before it was like, oh, he starts hitting from the line, and now all of a sudden we're shooting from 37. It's, I know it's not actually all of a sudden, but, like, how have you decided to develop that element of your game? Um, well, I, it, it started with, you know, how I started to – how teams started to defend me, where um, I was getting a lot of attention, where, you know, I was getting trapped and blitzed and stuff like that, um, which still can, can be an issue sometimes. Um, you know, especially in a playoff when teams just sell out, you know. Um, but it started when I started to be defended like that, you know, maybe my fourth or fifth year, um, where it was like I had to start playing from further out to give myself more space. So um, I really just wanted to become more of a, a serious threat from further out where, you know, if they don't, if they don't address me like 35, 37 feet, that I can shoot that shot and it wouldn't be um, – you know, a shot that our team would be mad at. You know, I think when I shoot it, you know, coaches, you know, when I was younger and I shoot from deep, coach would be like, dang, you know, why are you taking these shots? And our coaches would be like, you know, Terry is, gonna, is he not just going to accept it right away? You know, it was more of that type of conversation. Um, but I think once Terry started to see me in the summer more often, you know, when I was, you know, coming into the facility and he see how often I train at it and that I'm there every day, every morning, and I do – I work on my finishing, I work on my step backs, I work on my pull up jumpers, my fadeaways, my threes, making 10 in a row. And then at the end, I move out and I do it, you know, cause it's probably the, um, like the least important shot, you know, I guess you would consider because I'm going to be in those other spaces a lot more than I'm just going to be shooting every shot from out there. But I always made sure I worked on it. And I think it's grown on him. I think he accepts it. Um, but I, I really worked on it a lot just to, to create, you know, more space for myself. So teams have to cover me from further out on the floor. And then, you know, once I come downhill, I got more space and then, you know, the help has to come further and it's easier for me to see plays, easier for me to get um, to spots on the floor. That makes sense. So I'll ask you my original question. Thanks for indulging that one. Um, with the preseason being what it is, I know you said you're not the one making the shots, but what do you want to see accomplished in these four preseason games? What will make you feel like solid coming out of that preseason season heading into the regular one? Um, I want to see, you know, once we get on the floor, I want to see us be able to put our principles, you know, that we've added onto the floor. And I want to see it look good. You know, usually you're like, okay, um, it's the preseason. It's going to be some rust, you know, but I, I want our rust to be, you know, missing shots maybe. And, you know, just not coming out hot offensively. But I want to see the things that, that we can control, being in the right spots, our communication. Um, our understanding of what we're trying to do. I want to. I want to see it look like, um, you know, this is what we do. And everything else, you know, we know we're going to make shots. We're going to score points. You know, we know what we do. We've done it for a long enough period of time. But I think um, defensively is where you know we haven't always looked like that team. And um, I think starting the preseason, we should, you know, that should be our focus. You know, not on whether we win or lose, or you know how many shots we make or anything like that is like the things that we're focusing on in a few days of practice before that game. Um, you know, let's put it on the floor and let's be disciplined and let's be solid at that. 
Um, and, and, you know, have the right habits from the jump, not say, you know, or it's just preseason, we're going to be better. Like, let's have our, let's have our shit together from the jump. All right. Thanks, Dame. Uh, we've got CJ waiting in the wings, so uh, we'll wrap it there. Now or never. Now or never. Let's do it.